Okay, so um, my name is Emer Horn and I'm a fourth year science education student. I'm teaching biology and egg science, so I'm teaching secondary school students in the University of Limerick. So um, the title of my research project was the use of a choice board to support the universal design for learning framework when teaching transition year genetics. So I know it's a bit of a mouthful and if you're not familiar with education, it might make any sense to you, but I'll try to break it down for you first anyway. Okay, so universal design for learning is basically a framework that focuses on inclusiveness in the classroom. So accounting for the variation among students that we see in, in an everyday classroom. So we can kind of see here, this cartoon kind of summarizes the issue in many schools today that um, this professor is asking all these different animals with these different abilities to show their, show their learning or show what they're able to do by climbing the tree, which seems ridiculous to us, but this is, can be translated to a school situation as well. So in schools, we might be asking students to show their learning um, or learn from one instructional method, show their learning through one assignment or one exam, where they have all these different strengths and abilities that might be more suited to doing it another way or more suited to doing it a different way. So universal design for learning then kind of seeks to provide students with more options and more choices to show their strengths and show how they're able to do things through different ways. So it kind of views the assessments or the instructional methods as the barrier to a child's education rather than viewing the child's um, learning difficulty or background or anything like that as the barrier. So it's based off of neurology. So firstly, we're going to look at the recognition networks. So they're related to how we take in information and how we organize it. So to support this in the classroom, which we have the first principle of UDL, is to provide multiple means of representation. So for this, you could um, do representation of orally, visual um, instructions, or um, through words, through images, things like that. Then the strategic networks then are the how of learning. So how we might show our learning, so how we might communicate what we know to other people. So to be able to support students to express their learning in a way that suits them, we can provide multiple means of action and expression. So primarily this means providing students with choice. So giving, giving them an option to show it through one way or the other. Um, and then lastly, then we have effective networks in our brains. So this is relates to how we're motivated. We could be motivated intrinsically from within us or extrinsically from without us. Out us. Um, and to support students through this, we could provide multiple means of engagement. So engaging students in different ways and providing multiple motivators or different types of motivators for um, the variation that we'd see in an everyday classroom. So why would we move towards a UDL framework? So in the last 10 years, they've been a major move to inclusive education in Ireland. Um, so we have, because of this, we have more um, a variation in our classrooms, we have more learning difficulties in our classrooms that we have to account for and support. And our classrooms are becoming increasingly diverse because of this. But not only learning difficulties, we could also have students from different educational backgrounds, different attention spans and interests, different language abilities and different cultural backgrounds. So we'd have to uh, try to find a way where uh, the variation in students isn't stopping them from accessing learning, okay, or accessing their potential. So a choice board then. So this is what my um, action research project focused on is using choice boards. So through this, students had an option or um, students had an option or um, a difference in way they could show their learning. So relating to the second uh, principle of multiple means of action and expression. So a student could choose to do group work. They could choose to show their learning through a diagram research a video. So there was kind of different variations of difficulties as well. So if a student was weaker at the topic, they could choose maybe a lower order one, or if they were felt they could push themselves, they could choose a higher one, or they could choose more than one um, option as well. So basically, mine was an action research project. So if you're not familiar with this, this means that I was in on my teaching placement, I was able to implement this or give the students a choice board, get their feedback and then allow that to inform and improve my own practice. OK, so it's just with my cohort of students. So first phase of action research is planning. So I design my choice board and um, look up research and see what way is best to do it, implement it then. So give it to the students. Observation is um, gathering data, gathering student feedback and how they get on. And evaluating the feedback then and then from the evaluation you can gather your feedback and use it to inform your second cycle and that will inform your planning then in your second cycle and you'll have more of an informed then way of doing your second cycle okay 
So methodology then, so I had two cycles of implementation um, with 17 students and I had a mixed ability classroom. So there were students with learning difficulties, different backgrounds, uh, students who were, had English as a second language. So this is kind of everyday classroom, you'd nearly see this. So most classrooms, there'd be definitely mixed ability in there. Uh, data collection methods then, so I use linker scale questions for quantitative data, critical incident questionnaires and discussion groups then for qualitative data. So just a brief um, explanation of the implementation phase. So we had two cycles. So cycle one, the choice board was implemented in a class on genetic disorders. And, and at the end of the class, students carried out the choice board to show how they um, interacted with the topic. Cycle two then, um, we use a choice board in a class on Mendel's genetic terminology and an introdu introduction to genetic crosses. And then feedback from the first cycle was used to inform and des des the design for the second cycle. So when I was analysing my uh, feedback then, I discovered the following themes. So the main theme was engagement. Then we had assessment for learning. Choice was another big theme. Attitudes towards genetics and genetic literacy. Uh, difficulty level of the choice board. Changes made for the second cycle and ICT. So I'm going to focus in on engagement and choice as my two main themes. So if we look at engagement in cycle one versus cycle two, engagement in cycle one was actually uh, quite poor which surprised me a bit because I thought the choice board was, after doing all my research on it, I thought it was going to be um, brilliant. Um, but uh, from the first cycle, I could see that uh, students didn't actually interact with it as well as I thought they would. And from analysing the feedback then, I was able to see that students thought that some of the tasks on the choice board were too difficult or that they took too long. And that a lot of the time, the act of learning and kind of these kind of out there tasks like presenting or uh, doing group work and things like that students weren't used to this way of learning so that kind of really put them outside of their comfort zone which caused their engagement levels to fall so for the second cycle then I made three changes um sorry that there I made three changes so I gave shorter tasks in the choice board and less difficult tasks so less kind of out there more kind of what the students would be used to and to enhance engagement then I included more ICT um, into the choice board so students had their phones in class so they could use their phones to support their learning there and you can see there in the second cycle then that engagement increased by um, a good bit that students were agreed to be being more motivated and um, disagreed to being unmotivated so you can see there that the changes did, did then make an impact on my practice. So the second main te theme then related to the choice board is choice. So students interacted generally well with the choice. So it, they were either neutral or agreed that they enjoyed making cho choices based on what they liked um, in both cycles. So positive feedback then relating to choice. So students enjoyed expressing themselves through diagrams and images. They also enjoyed using group work and quizzing their peers or interacting with their peers. And they got to use ICT then as well to show their learning in the second cycle. So negative feedback then relating to choice. So uh, one student um, expressed how she was had poor decision making skills and how this impacted then on her um, interaction with the topic. So she spent too much time deliberating what, what decision she was going to make. And then this kind of overwhelmed her and kind of impacted on her engagement as well. And then the second one, so time consumption of decision making. So other students then expressed as well that they felt that kind of this element of choice was a bit of a waste of time that they could, why can't they just do the one assignment and have it over with and it'll be done rather than wasting an extra step on the choice. So that's just interesting to see the different kind of feedback you might get from students, um, negative and positive. OK, so this is just my discussions and conclusions then. So the choice board was used effectively as a revision tool for assessment for learning so students could use it to revise what they've done in class. And a scaffold, so scaffold just means support for students. So as a visual support for auditory instruction, auditory instruction, including group work and ICT scaffolds within. So the group work and the ICT also supported students and in support of their engagement as well. So then our two main themes are engagement and choice. So choices were too difficult in cycle one, which demotivated and overwhelmed the students um, and had a negative effect on their engagement. And then in cycle two, engagement improved and um, we had shorter and easier tasks and the ICT then also helped the engagement. So that's me. Uh, thank you very much for listening. And if you have any questions, you can fire away.